Kubernetes secrets are one of the big points, potentially maybe the weakest point of Kubernetes. So as a result, we got a bunch of tools to manage our Kubernetes secrets. And by the way, you see those nails? That's my daughter saying that I'm not fashionable enough, so don't freak out. Now, most of those tools related to secrets are concerned mostly about how secrets should be created in the first place, but not whether we should have secrets in Kubernetes. Now, that's a bit confusing because secrets themselves, no matter how we create them, are insecure, at least in Kubernetes. So it's a bit of a mystery why everybody is trying to figure out how to create them instead of maybe trying to figure out how to get rid of the secrets in Kubernetes. So let's explore in this video whether we can get rid of Kubernetes secrets altogether and use something else. Before we dive into the solution that I will propose or at least explore, let's see what are the options that we have. We can use external secrets operator to pull secrets from some external secret store and manage or create secrets in a Kubernetes cluster and manage those same secrets. Now, if you're not familiar with external secrets operator, well, there is a solution for that. There is a video check it out. Or we can go down uh, GitOps friendly route and use something like sealed secrets, which are manifests that contain secrets encrypted in a Kubernetes cluster, and that can be decrypted only from within the same Kubernetes cluster, and such manifests with secrets can be safely, more or less, stored in Git. There is a video for that as well, check it out if you haven't already, because Sealed Secrets is absolutely awesome. But this time, I'm not speaking about either of those tools. I'm going to present Secret Store CSI Driver. Uh, it's a bit of a long name, but it takes a completely different approach. It does not create Kubernetes secrets. Instead, it mounts volumes directly in pods. From Kubernetes perspective, it is yet another container storage interface, like any other, any other way you are mounting volumes into your pods, except that this time those volumes will contain secrets. And those secrets can come from AWS or GCP or Google Cloud and Azure. And I think, yes, it's HashiCorp Vault. Those are the four currently supported secret stores. And if you mount those secrets as volumes, then secrets will not be independent from pods, so you cannot access them directly. They will not be stored in etcd. And there are quite a few other benefits or potential issues that are avoided with this approach. Now, on the other hand, this approach might generate quite a few other issues, but we'll get to that part at the end. For now, let's explore secrets store CSI driver. So no more Kubernetes secrets unless now, I already installed uh, everything I need to install. And if you want to follow along, you can do it because everything is in a gist, both what I'm showing here and what I did in advance. So go ahead and follow along through the gist. It's in the description. And to begin with, what should I do first? Yes, let me show you the pods in the cube system namespace because over there you will see that it is a daemon set, meaning that it is running on every single node of the cluster and that way it is capable of mounting a local volume that contains the secrets into pods and so on and so forth. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is that it is a daemon set, so expect to have a pod for the driver on every single node. Now let me output the definition that I will use today to mount secrets into a pod of my application or pods of my application and it is in secret store yaml it is relatively straightforward uh, it really says that hey in this case the secrets are in vault this is the address of the vault instance and here's the path to the secret and the key and the object 
of the secret itself, the one that we want to inject into our applications. Now, the real action is actually defined or happening in the deployment itself. I mean, it could be in any other Kubernetes resource that can mount volumes, but in this case, in the deployment that defines my application. I have a service account name that will give permissions to access a vault. Uh, there is a whole setup, which is a bit annoying and horrifying with vault, but it is what it is. What does matter once you pass the setup that you need to define the service account, and then you mount the volume just as you would mount any other volume and define the volume itself. And that's about it. It's yet another volume, nothing really special. And that means that the secret will be available as a file on a specific path, but we'll get there in a second or two. Now, before we proceed, let me validate whether the manifest that I'm going to use for my application are correct. And I'm going to do that with that three. So that three test and the path to the file, actually not the file, to the files, to the whole directory. Now, there are two groups of things important here. First of all, there is an object that Datri does not understand. That's the secret provider class that we've been exploring so far. And Datri doesn't understand it simply because it doesn't come out of the box, but we could extend Datri to understand it. And there are a few other issues happening here as well. Now, while I'm fixing that, or while I'm showing you the screen that recorded me fixing the issues, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Datri. Datri allows us to validate the manifests before submitting them to our clusters. And they were so kind to sponsor this video. So uh, I fixed my manifests thanks to Datri and uh, we can move on. Actually, not move on. Let me validate one more time whether the manifests are really correct. Now, everything is okay. Everything is perfect with my manifests and we can go back to a secret store and see what happened, what will happen if I apply those manifests. So the command is kubectl, namespace is production. I want to apply whatever is defined in the directory cates. And that's about it. All my manifests were submitted to Kubernetes. And now we should see what happened? What happened with the secret? What happened with the volume that contains the secret without being a secret? And to do that, I'm going to retrieve all the pods with kubectl namespaces production get pods. And then I'm going to store the name of one of the pods in an environment variable by using export pod name is whatever the name of the pod is. And then I'm going to execute a command inside one of those pods that will output the contents of the file slash mnt slash secret store slash password. And there you go. It's you will never find out. That's my secret. That's my password. I mean, fake password, right? What does matter is that the authentication, the password for my database is in a pod without ever creating a Kubernetes secret. Now let's see what happens if I modify the secret, in this case, in HashiCorp vault. So I'm going to exec into the vault pod, and then I'm going to execute vault kv put, et cetera, et cetera, and change the password to something else. And I'm going to exit that container, that pod container, really. Now, if I output that same file that is mounted into the pod of my application, we can see that now it says, my precious. The moment I change something in Vault and uh, Secret Store monitoring my Vault, it updated uh, the contents of the volume. Now, that feature is not enabled by default, and I think that it is currently uh, in the experimental phase. So you might want to check out my gist how to set it up if you want a uh, secret to be reloaded automatically. And also remember that your application needs to support that as well. Your application needs to be monitoring uh, the file system it is mounted. And whenever the file system, the file changes, then the application should take that change into the account and either reload itself. There are many solutions how to do that. What does matter is that the secret is always up to date with what is in this case in Vault, but those secrets can be somewhere else. Now, here's a very, very important question. Can we not have Kubernetes secrets at all? Now, that sounds like a silly question because I just demonstrated that we can really not have secrets, but will that ever work? And here's why I'm asking that question. If you're using third-party applications, 
that are almost certainly expecting authentication to other resources or so whatever the secrets are for to be secrets. If you're using something like this to mount volumes into your pods of third-party applications, you would have to modify Helm charts or whatever they're designed to do because almost all third-party applications are designed to use Kubernetes secrets when they need secrets in the first place. So you might need to tweak the third-party applications to make them somehow work in this way. And that leads me to believe that this might be a great solution, but only for your own applications, not really for third-party apps. Now, that being said, Secret Store can mount secrets and create secrets as well, but those volumes need to be mounted. So that's non-negotiable. And then creating secret as well is an additional bonus. But if you create secrets with Secret Store, then it, that defies the purpose of Secret Store in the first place. So it's a kind of strange combination that don't do that. What does matter is that you will have a lot of trouble uh, managing secrets in this way with third-party apps because almost none of them are designed to support uh, secrets in a volume instead of secrets in a, as Kubernetes secrets. Now let's talk about pros and cons. Let's start with cons, for example. Secret Store supports only AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and Vault secret stores. Now, for vast majority of us, that's just what we need. But then you might have your secret somewhere else, and then this would not do. You are probably, in that case, in a minority. But hey, that's a potentially negative point, because other solutions uh, for managing secrets have a much wider range of secret stores supported. Next. Uh, you need to add providers separately, which is not a big deal, but still other solutions uh, come with out-of-the-box support for many different providers. In case of secret stores, you need to uh, add providers, install providers that you need separately. Third is what I mentioned in the beginning of this section, you might not be able to use this with third-party apps. And that's a big problem. That's potentially the biggest issue here. It's a, it's a good design, I think. It's a great idea, but it will probably not work with third-party apps. And finally, the last negative thing is that documentation is not really great. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you might or might not find examples. They might or might not work. There are quite a few things that you need to guess instead of reading from the docs. So docs can be improved. Now, for the upside, for the pros, to begin with, this is Kubernetes SIG project. And that means that it has guaranteed community, a lot of attention, and so on and so forth. Uh, it is always good to give a chance to Kubernetes SIG projects because uh, yeah, those projects are within the Kubernetes community instead of being something separate from it. And the second and the biggest advantage really is that volumes mounted into containers are potentially, and I'm stressing potentially, more secure than secrets in Kubernetes cluster, you know, typical Kubernetes secrets created by all the other tools. Now, the difference is not huge, really, because many of the issues we have with secrets are still there, but nevertheless, it is more secure. That's the biggest reason. That's the advantage why you might want to use something like this. So all in all, it is an amazing project. It, it is a really good project, potentially paves the path uh, for some changes in Kubernetes itself. But as I said, I don't think that we can live without Kubernetes secrets. So this will not solve all your problems, just some of them. And when I say all of your problems, I mean problems related to secrets management, not all the problems. So all in all, great project, great for your own applications, for secrets that should be mounted as volumes into your own applications, not a good solution for third-party apps. And the question is, do you want to combine one solution for third-party apps, another solution for your own secrets? If you already have to have Kubernetes secrets for whichever reason, then does this really make sense? That, I, I want to love this project, but it is not solving the problems that we have with secrets, really. Um, yeah, we cannot live without Kubernetes secrets today, maybe in the future.